Hello, and welcome to this Fast Connect Virtual 2021 presentation on managing inventory within Sage 300. My name is Robert Lavery, president of Robert Lavery and Associates. When you think about managing inventory, essentially inventory is the lifeblood of wholesale distributors and manufacturing companies. Being able to pinpoint the exact location of inventory and managing returns effectively in a warehouse reduces errors and handling costs. This is managed through ORCID's bin tracking module and their return material authorization solution. But effective inventory management also supports a more effective sales process, especially for remote salespeople, which is where AutoSimply's Sales Anywhere solution comes into effect. And if you have to manage inventory within a warehouse or a store, we have solutions to help you be more efficient and effective, which include the AutoSimply barcode for operations, as well as barcode for manufacturing. So the product focus for today's presentation is essentially those solutions that I've just listed. AutoSimply barcode operations, where you can auto automate your PO receipts, your OE shipments, and your IC stock counts within your warehouse. A new solution that's been added to the operation suite for AutoSimply called AutoSimply Stock Take, which allows you to do advanced cycle counting based on value of the items or movement of the items, and also supports lot serial stock counts, which are not supported within the basic IC stock count within the inventory control module of Sage 300. And then you can add in the ORCID bin tracking so that you can track inventory and streamline your picking and put away processes within Sage 300 by identifying individual aisles, rows, racks, shelves, coolers, freezers, however you've laid out your warehouse and be more specific about the exact location of an item or in the case where you're storing the same item in multiple places in the same warehouse so that you're not losing track of these items and things aren't sitting on the shelf getting stale if they're perishable items or things aren't sitting around long enough to get damaged or dusty. And to sell the inventory, we have sales anywhere where salespeople in the field or people on delivery trucks can be sending inventory shipments out to customers with real-time posting of when the orders are processed, when shipments are committed and delivered with signing and invoice capability. And then you can e invoice a copy of the document to your customer as proof or verification that the delivery has been made and the customer has accepted that delivery. It also works well in a trade show or kiosk environment where you wanna record orders in real time and update them to sales order entry in Sage 300. And finally, the RMA module, which is OEM'd by Sage and sold on their price list to track returns and repairs of your inventory items within Sage 300 and being able to generate credit notes and replacement orders and order entry to expedite the return process for your customers. Now, the key benefits of these solutions and in particular, the barcode solutions is that you get low cost web users versus the more expensive land pack licenses within Sage 300. The AutoSimply barcode and sales anywhere solutions allow non Sage 300 users to log in and see information from Sage 300 without having to log in and then commit transactions within Sage 300 in real time. There's simple web screens on mobile devices such as tablets or smartphones, and therefore there's a short, short learning curve for the users. It does provide real-time access to Sage 300 information, so you're always dealing with the most current information within the system, and also you're able to update information from the warehouse to the Sage back office quickly and easily. But the user profiles ensure security and integrity of the data so that people are only able to see or access information that you allow them to, or update transactions that you give them access to. So whether that's sales anywhere, 
for mobile salespersons on the road, or barcode solutions that scan barcodes and post transactions from the warehouse, you've got the benefit of all these different features. Now, when we talk about the handheld devices, they're supported on Android apps that you can download from Google Play, Apple iOS applications that you download from the App Store, or Windows 10 mobile applications from the Microsoft Store. And these handheld devices are native, are running native applications to those operating systems, Windows, Apple, iOS, and Android. So if you're using Android phones or Apple smartphones, the barcode solution will run. However, we do prefer customers consider the use of industrial level handheld computers. And the form factor, as you can see, from a smartphone to an industrial handheld computer is very similar. And in fact, the software itself renders itself almost identically in terms of the size of the icons and the screen capture. But the battery life on these industrial level handheld computers is generally better, and so is the scanning technology. And the price of smartphones is quite expensive now, $1,400, $1,500. And you can get these entry level, industrial level handheld computers as low as $900. Although typically we recommend moving up one level within these units to around $1,200 or $1,300. So in terms of price and performance, we believe this is a better value for your scanning requirements. Now, when we look at the barcode solution, the idea is to bring warehouse transactions to the front line. In other words, we want people in the warehouse to be able to record these transactions in real time so that there's no lag because of paperwork being signed and manually transported from the warehouse to the back office and having a delay of one, two, maybe three days between the time goods are received into the warehouse and actually updated in inventory control within Sage 300. By scanning barcodes, we create these transactions in the warehouse automatically in real time, and documents are posted in Sage 300 with no additional data entry, importing or exporting in the back office of Sage 300. When we look at what modules within Sage 300 are supported, all of the operation suite, purchase order, order entry, inventory control. We also have integration to project and job costing. And for those of you that are manufacturing entities, we also have auto simply manufacturing orders and shop floor control, as well as support for serialized inventory and lot tracked inventory and ORCID bin tracking. So all of these standard transactions, PO receipts and returns, OE shipments and returns, and the IC stock transfers, physical counts, receipt shipment return, assembly, disassembly, and internal usage are all supported. Now the barcode interface, as we've seen from the hardware devices that I just showed you. There's barcode for operations, which supports the PO, OE, and IC transactions. Then you've got the manufacturing to do issuance of raw materials, returns, or receipts of finished goods items, but also shop floor control for scanning in the start and stop time at a particular workstation. And so there's the issuances on a manufacturing order. And then scanning barcodes, of course, improves accuracy and we can scan basic barcodes or QR codes or even matrix codes. And the barcode solution also comes with a camera feature so that you can take pictures of text and it will translate that into a scanned barcode. We also support GS1 barcode types, which is an internationally acknowledged global format for companies that need to track lot serial information, expiry dates, temperature controls, and because these are multi-dimensional barcodes, you can scan them once and you can capture multiple data factors. So again, whether it's a 128 barcode or a data matrix or a QR code, all of those formats can be supported with the Auto Simply barcode solution. Now, when it comes to cycle counts, the Auto Simply stock take module provides advanced stock take capabilities for Sage 300. You get support for doing counts of lot tracked and serial items, which as I mentioned, are not available within the standard IC stock count feature. So you can add non-existing lot serial numbers on the fly if needed. 
You can do cycle counts, again, based on the value of the items or the number of inventory turns, the movement of those items. And so either value or usage based, or you can just manually assign items by section of the warehouse to do cycle counts on a monthly or quarterly basis. And the count history is enhanced because we can tell you who counted what and when they did the count. So there's additional information on the audit trail around your stock counts when you use the Auto Simply Stock Take module. Now, within barcode version 2021, which is compatible with version 2022, all the way back to version 2014, we've provided the ability for you to use the cycle count capability within the stock count module of Auto Simply. There's no additional barcode module required. It uses the standard IC basic stock count module within barcode, but it also then allows you to use the cycle count features within the stock take module. And you can have special user licenses just for people that need to do stock counts only. And they're much less expensive than the standard barcode user licenses. You can also support offline stock counts, but that also requires the stock take module. And then you can do transfer orders so that you can move orders between barcode users as needed to make sure that orders are being fulfilled expeditiously. So let's go over to the barcode module and take a look at what we can do. So the main thing to understand is the barcode users are separate and distinct from your Sage 300 users. These are concurrent licenses that you can share if need be but it gives you the ability to authenticate with a username and a password. And then this user security allows you to define which types of transactions are supported for a particular barcode user. So you notice the barcode PO has PO receipt, multiple PO receipt and PO return, uh, OE shipment, OE returns, and then inventory control transactions. And when you're using ORCID's bin tracking module, also the ability to do bin transfers. Now, in addition to that, we're running the barcode system as a Wi-Fi service. So we integrate by looking for the IP address of the server where Sage 300 is installed and the SQL database. Now you can deploy this on a separate web server if you wish, or you can tie it to the application server or the database server, that's your choice. The login ID and password here is both for the database as well as Sage 300. So what this means is that we need one dedicated Sage Landpack license in order for you to be able to connect all your barcode users into Sage 300. And then when you run the test, you choose the company just to make sure that you're able to integrate the barcode transactions into Sage 300. So once you're connected, you're good to go. So what I wanna show you because our time is fairly limited is a PO receipt transaction with the barcode integration, and then we'll move through uh, sales anywhere and finish with RMA. So I'm gonna create a new PO to vendor 1200. I'm going to choose a standard item. Uh, actually, let's use a, a lot tracked item and that will make the, uh, so that's an A1900G for location one, quantity of 10 and we'll post and that will create my PO number 60. Now, normally without the barcode, you would go into the receipt entry and you would create a PO receipt based on the paperwork coming in from the warehouse. Now, my last receipt is 118 against PO 59. So receipt 119 will be the receipt we expect to create on the barcode. Now, as I mentioned, the barcode is a Wi-Fi service. It installs as a mobile app on the Windows start list. So when I open up the barcode system, I log in using my barcode user ID into the Sage 300 company I want to record this transaction for. And in the session date would be today's date, which is the date of the recording. And then I want to do the PO receipt. 
And if I'm not sure, I could either scan the PO number on the bill of lading, or I can just do a search on the handheld, pick up the PO, and I can see the most recent PO number 60 that we just set up within Sage 300. It knows the item, and then I can enter the quantity. Now you also can uh, have a percent variance against um, the PO quantity. So if you actually receive more than what's on the PO, that is allowed through the barcode system. Now we're also integrated to bin tracking. So with bin tracking, we've set up bins within location one, which is your IC location. So you have location one and separate bins within location one. And within this particular bin, which represents an area, aisle, height, and depth on a shelf, we have the item within that bin. And this is also a lock tracked item. So you can see the lock numbers for the item within a bin within this location. So you've got multiple levels of detail about the specific location of the item within a bin and the lot numbers within that bin. So as I record the transaction, I'll add another lot number that will go to 18 and my quantity of 145 will increase by 10 to 155. And it will generate a bin transfer transaction that we'll see after we record the PO receipt. So the bin detail requires me to enter the quantity that I want to receive of that item within the bin. And then it knows that this is a lot tracked item. So it's also then gonna prompt me on the barcode handheld to enter the lot. And that would be lot 44. Now, of course, I could generate, I could auto generate this uh, based on the next available lot number if I wanted to do that within the system. But I accept the lot, I accept the bin, and now I'm ready to post the transaction. Now, by confirming the post, it's going to generate two entries, both the PO receipt as well as the bin transfer document. So when that generates that entry, I'll show you through bin tracking that it's created receipt 119 bin transfer 70. So the bin transfer transaction that's created for the put away for that item is bin transfer 70 against receipt 119. That's a put away of the item for a quantity of 10, which is going to this bin. And that, and I could then also open up what the PO receipt looks like within the PO module from this screen. And you'll see that it's recorded against PO 60 receipt 119 for the quantity of 10. And it's assigned the lot that we recorded on the handheld device. So all of this information is captured from within the warehouse on the handheld system, updating Sage 300 in real time. And if you use bin tracking, then you can do physical counts using your bins. So you can also do a subset of inventory by bin if you want to do a cycle count based on bin. But if you use the inventory control stock count module from AutoSimply, you can generate worksheets using the um, cycle count group options that we had for high value or high usage items within um, Sage 300. And then you can use a cycle count validation based on value or usage. And that's how we introduce more advanced cycle counting capabilities within inventory control using the stock take module. So I've updated and in real time, I've posted the PO receipt to update inventory. The same thing will be true of OE shipments or stock counts when I do stock counts from the shop floor within Sage 300. So we need to move along quickly here. So let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation and continue on. with Sales Anywhere. So Sales Anywhere is mobile sales for Sage 300, supporting the activities of a mobile sales force on the road or doing client visits, 
creating transactions remotely and then posting in real time to Sage 300. So we don't need to wait until they're back to the office to update or synchronize what's on a separate device. It's reading Sage 300 directly. And this supports quotations, orders, shipments, and invoices, all three levels of OE sales transactions, payments, where you can take credit card payments with Stripe. Also, I forgot to mention capturing customer signatures on an OE confirmation, an instant document generation that you can then message to them through WhatsApp or some other app or email. It also supports document inquiry, so you can look up orders and ship an invoice or do partial shipments from existing OE orders. There's a POS mode that's designed for tablets that have larger screens that can hold more information about item details, location details, and special discount pricing. It also generates stunning messages so you can follow up on late payments on the go as you're speaking with clients during a visit. Now, as we mentioned, we have quotations, orders, shipments, and invoices. Very similar interface to what you saw with the barcode, except now it's sales with quotations, sales transactions, dunning messages, orders, and payment detail. You can add items and post those transactions directly to Sage 300. You can take credit card payments, as we mentioned. And the POS mode has enhanced functionality and detailed information because we have more screen to use. So you can embed pictures, you can see oh, discount levels, and this also then supports customer self-service. So your customers would be able to log into a portal and browse items or images within your catalog that you can publish through that portal. They can see specific item details and pricing and drill down into that specific pricing based on their customer information, so their specific contract or pricing, and then get notification when orders are shipped if they process an order from the self-service portal. It also allows them to see past orders and make payments on outstanding invoices. The technical requirements for both the barcode and Sales Anywhere is Sage 300 version 2014 to 2022 now, and the one land pack we mentioned for connection of all your sales anywhere or barcode users. You require Windows Server 2012 or above with internet information services. And then of course the devices for the phones or tablets, Android 5.0 or above, iOS 9 or above, and a Bluetooth mobile printer with thermal paper if you're gonna pr produce a printed receipt. And then Windows, the desktop version, supports Windows 10, home or above. If you have any questions, uh, I would suggest you post those in the chat. Uh, but what I want to do in closing is move over to the RMA module. All right, so within the RMA module, we have a number of analytical reports. The most important would be the fault analysis report because this allows you to track specific faults. So let's say you wanted to find out how many items are being damaged in transit? And I'm going to look at both my open return authorizations as well as my completed ones. And by printing off this report, I get a sense of how many items were damaged in transit. And maybe I need to review my shipping and processing uh, procedures. The other report that's really important is the return rate reports. If I use the customer return rate report, I can show it in summary, which will give me an idea of my returns against total sales because it's reading from the sales history table. Or if I run it in detail, it's reading from the RMA table and it's going to give me an idea of what returns I have from customers who had returns. And it sorts the report first by customer and then by item. So I get an idea of how much of the sales to this customer comes back to me as returns. And you can see in most cases, it's a small percentage of the sales, but this one, 10%, I guess that's okay, but you can see they have a large number of returns for that one customer. Now, when we run the report as an item return report, 
if we run the transaction report showing items first, now we're getting an idea of what items come back on a more regular basis, and then which customers have returned those items. So in this case, you can see we have 3.6% returns for those desk lamps. But as we move down the list here, we see that some of these items are coming back uh, more often, such as the halogen desk light. Almost 14% of my sales are coming back. So there might be a problem with that item that I need to talk to my supplier about, or maybe the way we're shipping those lamps uh, we're not putting them in pr enough protective packaging, and so we're getting a lot of returns due to damage in transit or cracked casings. The RA transaction itself sits on top of order entry and inventory control, as well as purchase orders, so that I can generate transactions that are going to ultimately end up in a credit note or a... Uh, replacement order. So I'm just going to look up one here. And you can see in this case, we've done a replacement order for an item. In this case, we've got a, just a credit note. And what you're seeing popping up on the right hand side are notes that can be attached through ORCID notes. So the three track transactions are credit notes, replacement orders, and PO returns. And as I look at the different types of transactions here, you can see in some cases we've got uh, just credit notes. And then you notice the miscellaneous line. That can be a restocking fee that's either a dollar amount or you can do it based on a percentage. So the returns can either be based on a hard-coded dollar amount, or it can be based on a return percentage. And that's up to the way you configure the system. So if I choose this particular return process, I can see that the miscellaneous charge here is a percent charge of 10%. And then there's a number of different fields here. What I'll do is I'll move down and hit the F9 zoom key. And you can see how we complete these orders based on a status code. So the status here is what the customer has told us is problem. And then we have workflow stages to update the information for customer service, arrived at the warehouse awaiting inspection. Maybe it's being inspected. Maybe it needs to be sent to a repair agent. And then we can record the fault type, which explains exactly what we found was wrong during inspection. And then when we complete the line item, we're able to then generate our accounting transactions, which could be generating a credit note for the item or a replacement order, depending on what we need to do. So now I've generated that credit note by clicking on the credit note. And that is something that's generated within the OE credit note feature. And then we can drill from RMA down into order entry and notice that we always use the reference back to the original RA number, which was RPC004. And the items being returned to inventory are listed and the charge code is deducted against the, um, the value of the credit note. So when you have a restocking fee, it will deduct that from the credit note that you've generated for that particular customer. And then we could generate a replacement order. And if we were shipping these back to our vendor, we would generate a vendor return. And all this information is going to be tracked and stored in the system for the RA. And just to finalize the presentation on RMA, you notice that in addition, we can track warranty information, consumer contact information if you're not selling directly to the end user, and additional comments. 
and then the integration into the other modules, credit notes and replacement orders in OE, returns for vendors in purchase orders. So that ends the presentation. We wanna thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your Bass account manager. You can also visit the Bass Connect website for copies of today's slide deck. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope you enjoy your day.